Okay, so the next thing, um, complex fractions this is really important. They come up in calculus as well a lot. And so let's say we want to uh, simplify something like um, a over a plus 2 plus 5 over a all over a over 2a plus 4 plus 1 over 3a. Now there are a couple of ways to do this, but um, I'll just show you guys one way. And if you already have a way, well, you can do that. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is um, combine the top into one fraction and the bottom into one fraction. So um, you need the least common denominator of each one. So for this one, um, the bottom, notice that this guy's factorable. So um, let's factor that first. And so then, just like in the problem we just did, we're going to multiply each by what it needs. So although this has an a plus 2, it's missing an a. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by a. This guy's missing an a plus 2, so I'll multiply top and bottom by a plus 2. This guy's missing a 3a. And this guy's missing missing a um, a two and an a plus two. So we'll multiply by two and a plus two. Okay. So then on top, I'm going to have one fraction. Um, it's going to be a squared plus. Here I'm going to get um, 5a plus 10 if I distribute this guy right here. And then this is going to be all over the LCD, which is now a times a plus 2. Okay, and then on the bottom I'm going to have 3a squared plus, and then if I distribute this uh, 2, I'm going to get plus 2a plus 4. And this is all going to be over... I multiply the 3 and the 2, I'm going to get 6a times a plus 2. Alright, and then you bust out with the uh, law of the tortilla. And so if you bust out with the law of the tortilla, multiply these guys together and you get a squared plus 5a plus 10 times 6a, a plus 2. So the very top and very bottom you multiply, they end up on top. And then you multiply the inside guys, and those end up on bottom. All right. It's 2a plus 4. And I put it all in parentheses because now you notice that um, you get cancellation here. The a's cancel. The a plus 2's cancel. And um, then what you do is you, with whatever you have left, you check to see if anything's factorable. Because you might be able to cancel more stuff out. And so in this case, it turns out you can't. So we'll just leave it alone, so we're going to have 6, 6 times a squared plus 5a plus 10 all over 3a squared plus 2a plus 4. And that's it. That's our answer. Okay, so now let's do an example of solving an equation. A, um, so let's say, let's say we're going to do, we want to solve um, 3 over x plus x over x plus 2 equals 4 over x squared plus 2x. Okay, so... Uh, solving rational equations is very similar to adding and subtracting rational equations. The first thing you do is you find the LCD of both sides. 
So to do that, we need to factor everything, all the denominators. So this guy factors into x times x plus 2. And so then what you do is you multiply both sides by the LCD. So notice the LCD is going to be um, just x times x plus 2. So that's what we're going to multiply both sides by. So x times x plus 2. Okay, and so here on the left side there's, there are two uh, fractions, so we have to distribute it to both. So what ends up happening is this x is going to cancel, and so what's left over is only 3 times x plus 2. Then on the second one, the x plus 2 cancels with this one, and we're just left with x squared. And here, um, the entire thing, x times x plus 2, cancels with this one. Um, the only thing you have to be really careful with is, um, here since there are two terms, make sure you distribute it onto both, not just cancel um, from here directly to the outside because this guy is distributed onto both. Okay, so this is going to equal to 4. And so then, uh, we just simplify and solve. So we get 3x plus 6 plus x squared equals 4. Uh, this is a quadratic equation, so we need to set it equal to 0. And let's put it in order. So we're going to get x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And then we factor. So we get x plus 2 and then x plus 1. Okay. So then what we end up getting are two answers. Uh, from this one we get negative 2 and from this one we get negative 1. The only thing, again, is you have to be really careful. Um, you have to go back and make sure that both of these are in the domain. Meaning that when you plug these in, um, you don't arrive at something that's undefined. So notice that if I plug in negative 2 into this fraction, what I get is 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. So this number, negative 2, is actually not a solution. So the only solution is actually just negative 1.